mind so whenever it is a weed killer we are referring to the use of the insects okay because we know that all the no crop or no one is free from the insect okay so whatever weed is there it is also a plant okay so that is also not free from the insect attack so what we are doing we are exploiting the one which best feeds on the weed and we'll try to mass multiply it in the laboratory and then release into the field so that we can increase the population and later on they will spread on their own and they give the, the control on the natural way. Okay, so that is what the weed control. In the last class I have told you, so whatever the weed control program in India is there, so it is mainly handled by the Directorate of Weed Research. Okay. Okay, so as I again told you, so we have, especially I'm dealing only with the weed control here. So we have introduced around 30 weed killers to India. So out of which we can see here, the six could not be released because whenever we import a weed killer from the other country, so it will be kept in the quarantine and it will be evaluated for the major, in, that is the ecosystem, that is the crops which we have in our ecosystem. So they will be evaluated in the quarantine if it found feeding on the economically important crop, okay? So it may be a perennial crop or it may be a field crop, any crop will be evaluated in the quarantine. If, he, if it is found to feed on any of the field crop or any of the crop we are growing, so then whatever the weed killers we have brought, so they will be destroyed in the quarantine itself. So they will not be released from the quarantine station. Okay, so that is the one. Even though the box, whatever the container containing the weed killer, it will be opened in the quarantine station itself. So it will not be opened outside in any of the room, only in the quarantine room, the box will be opened having the weed killers, rare there for the three generation, check for the host and then also we have to check for the hyperparasitoids and the parasite. So because the parasite of it should not attack other insects which we have in our biodiversity. So all will be evaluated in the quarantine. If there is anything negative, it will be destroyed in the quarantine. So that is the reason you can see here, the six could not be released, which we have imported. And out of that, again, you can see here, conditions like maybe a climatic condition or any other factor may be playing a role which is not allowing the imported weed killer to establish. So that is what the not recovered means. They are not multiplying, not lay the egg and not continue the life cycle. So that is what the not recovered. So 21 which we have imported, so they are established. So that means after the release, the mating has taken place, they have laid the egg and then they have continued the life cycle. And that is what the recovery we say. Out of 21, you can see seven are giving an excellent result, four are giving a substantial result, and nine are given, giving the partial control. So this is what you have in the, the history of the weed control. Okay, seven, still we are having the best control here in India. So next, moving to the, the weed killers. So here, for example, I will be dividing the weeds into two. One is the aquatic weeds and another is the, another group is the terrestrial weeds. So which country it has entered and what are the weed killers? Okay, and what is the status that you have to remember in this no, topic, okay? So, which we call it, it is a cactus, okay? So, here you can see, and the common name for this cactus is a prickly pear, okay? And here, I'll be just, if there are many species of the prickly pear are there, but only I'll be just referring because uh, only these two species are important for India, okay? That is the open shear vulgaris and the open shear stricta. So these two are the important species which have been imported to India. I will tell you why they have been imported. And they belong to the family Cactaceae. 
Okay, and the origin here you can see it is not India, it is a Western Hemisphere that is the North and the South America. So in many of the countries from this North and South America, they have been uh, means exported to the different parts of the world from this place. It is mainly because, so whenever you look this prickly beer or the open shear, so it had the three benefits. One is you can see the fruits, okay? So they are edible, which can be consumed by the human beings. That is the one we use. And the second one, you can see the pads. So these, we call them as the pads of the open shear. So these can be uh, consumed by the cattle. So that can be used as a fodder for the animals. So that is the second use. And the third one is that, so from this weight, so there is a one insect which multiply on this, we call it as a cochineal insect. From there, we are going to get a dye. So these, whatever these open share species were there, they were imported to the different parts of the world, mainly for the cultivation of the, that is the cochineal insect for the extraction of the dye. Because earlier we didn't have the any synthetic dye. So all what we depended, it is on the nature, whatever you get it and dye, what you get it from the uh, cochineal insect, it is an edible one. Okay, we can use it in the bakery products and also in preparation of the sweet, it was earlier used. Because of the availability of the synthetic dye nowadays, we are not using the, the one we get it from the cochineal insect. Okay, so this is what happened. Okay, so similarly, so you can see in the next time, so that was in the year 1787. Okay, so the traders, because there was a free movement between one country to the another country during those times, we didn't have the restriction. Okay, so you can see here, it is mainly by means of the trade. So the people when they are coming, so they brought these open share species to India. And that is how you can see, I just, I told you, fruits and the parts are edible. One is for the human and another is for the wild animals. So sorry, it is for the domestic animals. So here you can see the open shea vulgaris. <clears throat> so it is a coastal area of the southern Brazil and the Guru Uruguay is a native. From this place, it has been imported to India. And the second one you have is the open shear stricta, earlier name, you can see it is a delay name. <coughs> Do not get confused, sorry, because in some of the old question paper, you may be having the, the species as a delay name. If it is that, so then it is a stricta. So it has been imported, that is the Florida and also the West Indies. From there, it has come to India, okay? So remember these two species. What happened later, so we have to import it, that is a dye producing insect, that is a cochineal insect, because we didn't have the, the open share. When we don't have the open share, ultimately we'll be not having the cochineal insect. So ultimately after introduction of these open share species, we went for the introduction of the cochineal insect. Uh, means earlier we didn't have the correct, uh, means uh, any track was not there. What is the correct species identification? The taxonomy was not well established during that time. So what we did, uh, we went for the introduction of the cochineal insect of the species Dactylopius silonicus. <coughs> the family is the Dactylopidae and the order it is a Hemiptera. In common, it is called as a cochineal insect. But so instead of it was a Dactylopius coccus. So we have gone for the coccus species, which is going to produce the, the good quality, the dye. But what we went because of the uh, knowledge we didn't have, so we went with the introduction of the Dactylopia silonicus, which gave the low quality dye. So as a result, when the people came to know that this silonicus gives the low quality dye and which is not preferred by the people, then they stopped cultivation of the cochineal insect on the open share. As a result, what happened? Okay, so as a result, when we stopped cultivation of the, that is the cochineal insect, so this started exploring the different land. So it is uncultivated land, cultivated land, everywhere we started finding the, the open shear spaces. Okay, and again, it was causing a forest, especially when you look into some of the Australia, in the Australian forest, when you refer the the open shear species status during that time. So in the forest area, it was compactly packed. The people cannot move and it was problem for the animals also. That was the much severity of this open shear in Australia. And in also in India, we had the same problem. 
So what you did, so when you neglected the cultivation, so what happens, silonicus, it started spreading on its own. Okay, so here the Dactylopius silonicus, it controlled the open shear vulgaris effectively. That in which place? Only in the north and the central India. So vulgaris species was there. And on the Dactylopius silonicus established easily, easily, and it gave the effective control of the open shear vulgaris and it prevented the, uh, means it suppressed the, the development of the open shear. So, because of the good control of the open shear vulgaris by the Dactylopius silonicus, which was also there in the Sri Lanka, because Sri Lanka is just a neighbor of ours, and many things will come from Sri Lanka. Many of the insect pest diseases we get from the Sri Lanka, it is mainly because of the illegal transportation that you find via the sea route. Okay. So, as a result of because of its success, what we did. We sent the Dactylopius silonicus to Sri Lanka. So there also it has effectively established the open shear vulgaris and it has given the control. Then what about the stricta? So especially when you look into the scenario of the South India, in South India, the stricta was a more dominating and vulgaris was not there. As a result, this stricta was not a host for the Dactylopius silonicus. As a result of this, so Silonicus was not established on the stricta. So what we did, and again in the Sri Lanka, we had a, one species of the cochineal insect, that is a Dactylopius open shear was there in the Sri Lanka. So in the year 1926, you can see here, the, which is a North American species, whatever we have, because the whole America is the center for the open share. Ultimately, we get the cochineal insect also from the America only. So the Dactylopius open share, which is a North American species, it was imported from the Sri Lanka to India, especially it was released in South India. And this open share established effectively on the stricta and it has controlled the open share stricta in the South India. And within five to six years, we can see we didn't have the problem of the whatever the open share in India. So this is the best example where you can find it was naturally controlled by the cochineal insect in India and also outside part of the world. So just remember the open shear vulgaris, it was a problematic only in the north and the center, which was effectively controlled by the silonicus species, the stricter, which was the South Indian species, and it was controlled by the open shear species, okay, that is in the South India. So this is the cochineal insect you can see here. So this is the initial establishment of the cochineal insect, which, which is the second insect, which will be having a waxy coating. So just if you just remove and crush it, you will get a crimson color dye. Okay, so we have to, once the this uh, cochineal insect, it has established completely on the plant. So they remove the, the whatever the insect they have established, they go for sun drying and then it is a crushing or many things they will do for the processing. So this is a silonicus, which, you, which is going to give the control of the, uh, whatever the vulgar is, okay. So this is how you can see. So this is the initial status you can see where it is completely green. And this is the damage which is done by the open shield that is a cochineal insect. So this is a before establishment and this is a after. So if it is a drying means it is just a, you can just, if you, you just pass the cultivator or anything, you can easily remove it. So this is what the, the best biological control in the history we have. The example is the open shear spaces by the Dactylopius silonicus and also we have the open shear. So what I was just talking about in the Australia. In the Australia, so this cochineal insect was not giving the effective control, but what another species of the moth species was there. So here, here also you can see it is the inner mist, the species of the open shear is different. It is an open shear inner mist in Australia. It was problematic in year 1840. So what they did as the cochineal insect was not successful, they went with the use of the moth borer, that is a Cactoblastris cactorum, which is a pyralide, which is a moth species coming under the order. Lepidoptera, it was import, imported in the year 1925. It is from the Argentina, okay? So you can see here, this is a caterpillar and this is the egg. So egg, how the female will lay is just like a stick. One will be arranged one above the other, just like a stick, you can find the, the eggs of the, 
sorry, cactoblastis cactorum. Okay. So after hatching, you can see the caterpillar. So they will be just feeding on the chlorophylla content, what is there in the, the whatever the open shear spaces. Later, you can see entire open shear will be damaged. And this is the adult of the cactoblastis cactorum. They go for the pupation within the part and then adult emerge. And that is how the life cycle will be completed within the one month. So this is only present in, not present in India. It was tried only in the Australian country. That is a Cactoblasis cactorum, which come under the family Pyralidae and the Lepidoptera. So this is a one example for the one weird killer, which is the open shear species and the Dactylopias. Next, I'll be moving on to the, the most common, every whatever I would, I'm telling you, everyone has seen them, okay? The next you have is the Lantana camera, okay? It belongs to the family Verbinaceae. So here, everyone you know that so the lantern is having the beautiful flowers. And also, they go for breeding the particular color, okay? And also the combinations of the color, still it is going on in India also, okay? We in GKVK also have planted many of the lantern, which is having the white color flowers, yellow color, pink color. Many of them we have, it is mainly by means of the, uh, cutting, we are developing them. Even though still we know that it is a, a weed, okay? So here you can see the origin of the, this London is the Central and the South America. Then how it came to India. So because of its beautiful flowers, we got imported to the Kolkata Botanical Garden. Everyone you know about in Kolkata, we have a beautiful botanical garden. So there it was imported mainly in the year 1807 as a ornamental plant. It is a herb, okay? As you know that, you know what is a sherb, herb and everything in the horticulture. It is a herb and it is a very strong plant. And in the year 1809, it got introduced to India mainly as an ornamental plant. So later what happens, because you know that the weeds will be fed by the birds and it was easily propagated or it was spread to the different parts of the India. So by the year 2012, you can see it has covered around 13 million hectares, especially in the forest area. It is a very problematic because it is also having the thorns there and everything, it is a problematic. And especially when in the forest and also in the cultivated area, it becomes a major weed. So another most dangerous thing what we have, especially it is for the South India and it is symptomless carrier of the sandal spike disease. We know that especially for Karnataka, we have an asset that is a sandal, okay? This is the one carries the, the causal organism of the sandal spike disease of the sandal. And this is, it, you know, it is not expressed in the lantana, but when there is a sandal they, from there, it can be transmitted to the sandal from the lantana, just like a, a mosquito spreading a, a disease. So this is, will be carrying the causal organism of this sandal spike disease. This is why it is more dangerous. Okay, so then what about the biological control? So here you can see in the year 1921, we went with the introduction of a seed fly. So that we call it as the Ophimia lantanae. So it is a diptera and an agromyzidae, okay, which mainly feeds in the seed. Okay, so the everything breeding, everything will happen in the seeds of the lantern. You might have seen the small, the seed of fruit, it is very beautiful and into that, so they will be multiplying. So the native is Mexico and it was imported to India from the Hawaii. But what is the status when we imported and when you have released, it is not given the effective control, okay? So it is it, it has failed to give the control of the lantana in India, okay? But still we have in our place, wherever if you just collect the seeds and if you just keep it, okay, you'll get the adults of the, well, that is a, a seed fly. So it is it was not successful. And then what we did, we went for the another tinged, okay? So this is a, a tinged, okay, Telenomia scrupulosa, which is a, Tinged and it is called as a tinged bug, as you in the last course you have studied, where the hemi elytra will be having the lace like reticulations. You can see here. Okay. So that is a Chelionomia scrupulosa. It was imported in the year 1941 to India. It was mainly by the FRI. So that is in the Dehradun. So that is a forest research institute. It was imported from the, it is a Mexico and it was imported from the Australia because, as I told you, 
in the forest ecosystem it was a problem so the fra people they went with the introduction of this tinged bug so everyone you know that the, if it is a tinged or if it is a bug so they are having a piercing and a sucking type of the mouth parts they mainly damage the plants by sucking the plants up and that leads to the drying of the leaves and then it is later to the plant and where they multiply so whenever you look at lantern of weed so just you have to see the ventral side not on the dorsal side you will be having this um this teleonomia because because the direct sunlight falls on the leaf it is not tolerable by the insect so that is why so they will be multiplying on the ventral side of the leaf the eggs will be laid there only and these are the nymphs and this is an adult so both the nymph and adults damage the lantern by sucking okay piercing and sucking the uh, what are the plants up okay so this is the nature of feeding if their population is there you can see this is how the drying of the lantern okay so this is the close up you can see and this is the initial damage you can see where the leaf color or anything it has been damaged so this is the indication and also in the previous diagram picture here also you can see if there is such yellowish marking or some staining is there on the upper side definitely on the ventral side you will be having the this teleonomia bug will be there on the ventral side so this is how it is going to damage the lantana camera okay so that is the piercing and sucking and drying of the leaf so mainly they prefer to eat on the leaf next here why this is also a more because when we imported telonomia scrupulosa in the quarantine so we have tested apart from the many host what we tested in the quarantine the teak was also tested in the because you know that a teak is a important forest crop and also it is a forest species and also it is a important value for our india so what they found in the quarantine station they found that it found to feed on the teak flowers okay so because it is going to damage our teak flowers the entire population of the chelionomia what we imported from the australia it was destroyed in the quarantine station okay so because it was attacking the teak flower but what happened the insects are very small somehow there's few of the insects they got escaped from the quarantine what we also do our people because of the covid will keep the people in the quarantine station they will jump that and also i think our girls also did our present third year students also and also previously when there was before the second lockdown what you did everyone you jumped especially girls because you have the compound you have jumped and you have gone out so that is how the insects also they got escaped from the quarantine station so what they had you can see after 10 years okay that was in the year 1951 okay so they recovered the lantern bug at a 40 kilometers from the dairadur so it was during uh, the in the encounter only after the 10 years because they were not knowing that the population has been escaped from the quarantine but it was came to know only after the 10 years but during the 10 years period so they were after identifying they found that it was not in the natural condition it was not feeding on the teak flower at all so what they did again the fra people they again they went they collected the, the lantana bug and they have mass multiplied and you can see here they started releasing it back into the ecosystem mainly you can see they started from the year 1972 so they have released at the three places that is a dharmapura bhopal and shillong in the different years they went for the release of the this lacewing bug into the lantana ecosystem for the control and it was multiplying effectively and it was controlling the lantana but what happens during the course of time as i told you every insect is having a, a enemy okay so this lantana is also having an enemy a parasite especially you can see here we will be having a severe cold okay especially you look into the situations of the devaradun and all okay shillong and all you can just remember so the temperature will be very cold during the winter so there will be heavy mortality of the this lantern bug okay so that is the main reason in also in our place also we have the severe we cannot tolerate how an insect can tolerate the, the cold winter so because of that also you might have seen during the winter season many insects will not be very active they go for the sleep because the the climatic condition if it is not suitable for them they go for the sleep okay so here also you can see here because of the severe cold winter so the mortality will be there during the winter 
Apart from this also, you can see here, there is a one egg parasitoid, that is a erythromelus telonemia. So this, the percent parasitization of the egg, it was 85%. Then just think about a 15% of the population which is surviving and it is not giving the effective control. So this is, a, these two are the reasons why telonomia scrupulosa is not successful. Otherwise it is the best biological control agent. So because of this also, what it makes, we have to go for the release regularly. After the winter, you have to go for the uh, release of the, the population of the telonomia. So this is the release rate for every a patch of the line, what we have, we can go for the release of the thousand bugs. So they, that will be multiplied or maintained in the laboratory, multiply and they will go for the release at the uh, end of the winter. So that that will go, take the control again about the lantana. So this is, what is the status of the lantana? There is a, another insect. So there is a Orthesia insignis. Again, he has seen this during the first course, which is an orthesidae. Okay. Here you can see, especially in the Duranta, you might have seen, especially in front of our uh, college, we have a Duranta as a hedge crop. On that, definitely during the summer months, so it will be a severe pest on the Duranta. Okay. So it was in the year 1951. So somehow it came to India from Mexico as a accidental introduction because we go for the importation of the cuttings and many things because it is a polyphagous pest. During that time, we got that and also you, you can see here, it also attacked the, the lantana. But even though if it is attacking a weird lantana, we are not encouraging it because it is a polyphagous and attack many of our ornamental crops. So that is why we are not encouraging the orthesia in sickness. Okay, so this is about the lantana camera. So next you have is the Parthenium hysterophorus. Everyone you know about this Parthenium. The, it belongs to the family Compositae and it is called by the different common name like the Congress queen. So because of the white cap appearance and then we have the carrot grass because in the initial stage when it is before flowering, it, you may get confused with the carrot, okay? Whatever the crop we have. So that is why it is a carrot grass and another is a ragweed. So these are the different names which are given for the Parthenium. And also, the, remember, it is not a native to our India. So the native is, you can see, it is a Mexico, okay, and West Indies, okay. So what happened? So here you can see, I listed some of the countries. In almost all the country, you can see Australia, China, India, Israel, Nepal, South America, always you can see it is a, listed as the number one weed in all these countries. So then how, as already I told you, along with the grains, what we imported, it came to India. And the first time it was noticed in the Maharashtra, that in the Pune place, it was in the year 1955, okay? No one was knowing what is the crop. And later it was in the year 1956, there was a one scientist by name Rao who described it as a Parthenium hysterophorus. Then we, uh, then after that, so then we just took for the, how to go with the control of this Parthenium. So here you can see by the year 2014, so the Parthenium has occupied around 35 million hectares of the land in India. Okay, so everywhere you will find it. So no land is free from the Parthenium. Okay, so this is how, what is the status? So it uh, means it has spread and it has acquired almost all the cultivated wasteland. All the land is occupied by the Parthenium. So then what is about the biological controls? So whatever the biological control of this Zygogramma is there, we should give credit to again to the NBIR Bangalore. So which is mainly responsible, earlier it was also responsible for the control of the weed. So there was a one entomologist called by name Manjunath, Dr. Manjunath sir, still he has retired professor and still I think so he is the AG plus. Okay, he, we should credit for him for the biological control of this Parthenium. He was the one who imported, who went for the importation of the Zygogramma. He was he, during that time, he was a director for the NBAR. Okay. So what in hand? So we cannot import large number of the insect from the other countries. So here in the year August 21st, I think so during the month of the August in your NSS camp, you will be celebrating August 21st as a Parthenium day. 
Then what is the reason why you are celebrating August 21st as a Parthenium Day? Because that was the day when we imported the Zygogramma bicolorata from the Mexico. Okay, so here you can see how many we have imported. So we have went for the 307 adults of the Zygogramma bicolorata. It was in the year 1983, it was imported to NBAR Bangalore. So it was the station in the Bangalore, which where we went with the importation of the Zygogramma bicolorata. So directly these adults were not released into the ecosystem. In the quarantine, you can see the 40 plant species were evaluated for, uh, for checking its host plant and they belong to the 25 families. So this was what they did in the quarantine. So they found that Zygogramma bicolorata was very much specific to the Parthenium. So after that, so they went for the multiplication in the lab and then they went for the release. So you can see here in the month of the June and August, that was in the next especially in and around Bangalore. Everyone you heard about the Banirgata and we have heard about the Heser Gata, Sultan Pala Road. I think so if you're coming from the Artinagar, you'll be having this place, okay? So because nearby the NBN. So there in these three places, the adults of the Zaiku Gramaway released into the ecosystem. And here you can see after the four years, okay? You can see that was in the September 1988, by that time it has cleared around five hectare of the uh, Parthenium, which, which was there in the nature. Later, you can see it has spread to about two, two kilometers square area of the land. Okay, so this is how it was multiplying and it was spreading wherever the Parthenium was there. And by the end of the 1994, you can see here, two million kilometers square area of the land was occupied by the Zygogramma by Colorata and still it is controlling. But because of the high mass multiplication of the Parthenium, Zygogramma is having the low production rate. So that is how it is not connecting. So, okay, but and another reason is during the winter, they also go for the resting. That is the reason why it is not effectively controlling the Parthenium. But here there is a one incidence because always the students will be having the problem that, so because sometimes the some of the teachers will say that the release of the Zygogramma has been banned. So please student, it has not been banned because it was banned only in the year 1991. So here you can see the government of India banned its international intention release. So that means in the nature we have already released and now we cannot make all the Zygogramma to collect, recollect them and then we of this ban on the release of the Zygogramma. Always you know that if some group is, when it is working hard, other one people, one group scientist will be there who will pull your leg. Always it is there in your student life also. Everywhere we have that is there in the world and it is a human nature. So what the one group of the scientists, they have reported to the ICR is that, so these Zygogramma adults, they found to feed on the sunflower. This is the what the report was sent to the ICN. So because of that, the temporary ban was, in, in, that means it was made because to avoid the intentional release. So it was not left there only. Then ICN, what it did, so it gave the, it made the a committee. So that we call it as a fact finding committee. So which is having a scientist from the dis different disciplines. So they were given the task to um, confirm, okay, whether Zygogramma. So they, um, their responsibility was to confirm whether the uh, Zygogramma feeds on the sunflower, okay? So in the year, you can see 1999, so the ban was lifted. Why? Because the group of the committee, which was, uh, which was identified by the ICR, they reported that the Zygogramma adult was not feeding on the sunflower. Then why another one group was telling this way and why the another group? So for why it was going to sunflower, I'll just tell you. You know that the pollen, okay? The sunflower is having the big flower head and it produces the more number of the pollen. Everyone, you know that. So why the bees are also going for that? So what happens? Because of the wind, the pollen will fall onto the leaves of the sunflower. Why this Zygogramma adult visited sunflower is only to it, it was resting on the sunflower leaf and it was feeding only on the pollen, not on the leaf. 
So this was the identification. This was a truth that was identified by the fact finding committee. And because of that, the ban was lifted in the year 1999. Okay, so don't have the confusion that so release of the zygogramma is not banned. It can go for the release. Okay. Then what is its life cycle? Okay, so if you just closely absorb the, the that is the parthenia. Okay, now it is a winter season, so they will again go for the resting. So if there is a permanent source of the water, and there if you have the parthenium, you will be definitely having zygogramma. But in the other land, so you will not be finding this because you can see they go for the dipose in the pupal stage or sorry in the adult stage from November to May. Now the population will be very negligible. So after, during the first monsoon shower, okay, the adults will come out. So that is emerge in the month of the monsoon, that is in the month of March or sometime, it again depends upon the rainfall. If you are getting rain in the March, so you'll find it. If not, in the May, you'll get it, okay? So once the adult emerge, so this is what the mating. So the mating place takes place and the eggs will be just laid on the, the Parthenium itself, either on the leaves or on the stems, everywhere they may be laying the egg in a group of two to three, and sometimes they may be five to 10, maybe there, which are a little bit orange color, and they're oval. And after the hatching, you can see these are the grubs, okay? So four to five instruments are there. So the grubs, mainly they, are, they call them as a defoliator. Defoliator and the so which are feeding on their leaf, okay? They're consuming the entire leaf, so we call them as a defoliator because in many of the exams you'll be having the question what the zygogramma so remember zygogramma is a defoliator which mainly prefers to eat on the leaves of the parthenium if the food is leaf is exhausted then only they will go to the fur but the main target is the leaf okay so after once they complete the life cycle so the eggs you can see they take around 10 days for hatching and the grubs, they take around two weeks for the development. That is the 15 days after that, the mature larva climb down and it go for the pupation in the soil. In the soil, they emerge and uh, they go for the pupation. Again, adults come. So the life cycle will be continued for two to three life cycles. But by the end of the November, the adult will emerge within the soil, but just it will be sitting silently, but it will not come because it is not good for the winter or thrive the winters so that is why it is going for the resting during the winter okay so the family of the zygogramma you can see here it lives for it is a trisomelidae which belong to the order polyoptera and you can see here the adults will survive for a long time okay it is 35 to 40 days the longevity of the adult so that is how we have the benefit okay the 15 days by the a grubs and another 40 days by the adults because both the grubs and the adults are feeding on the parthenium nearly we have two months they have the life cycle and they can feed on that and you can give the get the good result if the population is not there you can just collect from the way that we have and you can go for the release okay so this is about the, the parthenium okay so here i'm just giving you the the what is the ipm package for the parthenium so we say many things that directly we go for the zygogramma by color acha. So before that, so one always we advise. So before flowering, so if there is a flowering, so there will be setting of the seed. So that will again spread to the different plants, to the different land area. So what we say, if you are allergic, then wear the mask and or you can also use the hand gloves okay you can go for the manual uprooting before the flowering and the seed setting so after flowering and seed setting there is no use because already it has done its job okay this is the one and use of the competitive plant here what happens in the karnataka especially if you look cashew cerecia which produce just like a groundnut it is which produces the yellow color flowers. So what it will do, it will compete with the parthenium and it suppresses the development of the, it is a leguminous crop, okay? It suppresses the development of the parthenium. So we advise the, go for the cashier. So then afterwards, if you just go for the intercultivation, you can incorporate into your soil. So that is the one which is doing in Karnataka. There is another species of the cashian that is a tora which is doing in the MP that is in the Madhya Pradesh they are doing with the tora. 
And the second uh, third option already you have is a mycoherbicides. So it is not directly herbicide, it is a mycoherbicide because just like the insects which are feeding on the parthenium, parthenium is also having diseases. You can see here the powdery mildew, which is a fungus causing, it is a fungus which causes a disease in the parthenium, that is the IDM parthenium. So this can must be multiplied in the laboratory and you can go for the spraying, but it is not available as easily what you find for the zygogramma. Then you have the rust fungus, that is a Puccinia abrupta, Parthenicola is the variety. So this is the one which causes disease, rust diseases in the parthenium. And another is the collar rod disease. Collar rod disease means where you have the connection between the root and just below above the ground, you'll be behind, that is the collar region. So there, there will be <coughs> rotting, okay? So that can also be go for, that is a sclerotium rolfesi. So we are not advising this collar rod disease because you can see it is also attacking the groundnut, which is an economically important crop of for. India. So that is why you can go for the powdery mildew because powdery mildew, why again we are not advising is it? it is again a polyphagus. It may take up to the cultivated rust fungus, you can go. But the multiplication is it is not available easily. So we are not using this mycoherbicide. And another option you have is a zygogramma bicolorate. So all these we have to take collectively and then we can control the parthenium. So this is the IPM for the parthenium. That is the third weed under the terrestrial. So next here you have is a, another terrestrial weed that is a Siam weed. I think so again, it is the common that we find during the, the rainy season. In GKVK campus, at least we have this plenty. Okay, so it is a chromolina odorata. Just whenever during the rainy season, if you see it produces the purple color flower. And try to observe, no bee will visit this plant. Even though we are having the plenty of Promolina odorata because this is a toxic to the bees. So if you collect the pollen and nectar from these flowers, the colony of the bees will be destroyed because the, it is a poisonous, it is a toxic to the bees and that is why the bees are not attending the, these flowers because of the toxicity, okay? That is also another negative part where if, suppose if they, if they, now they know because of that only they are not going. Initially they have tried, now the bees know that I, we should not really go for the collection of the nectar from this, so they are not visiting it, okay? So this is a weed which is native to West Indies, okay? And also to the continental America. So this is a place. It was introduced to Assam. So this is in the Northeastern part, it was introduced during the World War First. that was in the year 1914 to 18 during that time. So because the movement of the soldiers, many people were moving, so it came to India during the world war first and that to plus first, first place what we where we observed it is in the it is seen is in the assam so here later on it started spreading to the different parts of the country in 1915 you can see it is in the chhattisgarh especially the forest and the wasteland was the main target for that and 1924 to 25 it came to west bengal and 32 to 33 in many forest land it was seen. So that is how you can see it was in the during the first war 14, by the year 33, you can see it became a major breed. So we have to go for the control. Then you can see here it was not there to the South India. This chromolina was not there. So here again you can see here just a person who was coming from the either from the West Forest Land or the West Bengal, when he was carrying coming from that area towards the and the south, that too, that is the person, to, he went to Kerala. So we carry our luggages and the seeds of this chromolina was stuck to the, the bag, which was carried by the person. And that is how it has been introduced to South India. That was in the year 1940, that is in the year 1942. So that is how you can see now chromolina is distributed throughout the country and distributed in the Northeastern and the Southern states. And you can see here Assam, AP, Karnataka, Kerala, MH, all the, almost all the South states are listed here, okay? And also you can see, especially in the plantation crops, coconut, cocoa, where we have all these cashew, rubber and all, in between they have the wider spacing. So there it started becoming a major problem, okay? The control, because the multiplication rate is very high within a, 
one month or 15 days, so entire land will be covered if you, if you have the inoculum of the seed. So it is a problematic. Then how you have to go for the... Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, tell me. Ma'am, how could you say that uh, from North India to South India, it was came through, uh, means uh, the seed stuck to a bag and came. Because uh, as I told you, we have the uh, center there, which is working because they had a history. Okay, they have when they have just traced down, it, it was first what happened, no? for example, now you think about the COVID, okay? So many people are coming from the other countries to India. Okay, what we say them, be in the quarantine. Again, they will escape, okay? We, we will be knowing that it has come from that place, okay? So it is just a tracing. So other person may be brought, but only the correct trace, whatever the path they got is from this person, okay? So many people maybe came to Karnataka or Tamil Nadu, many people, but only the track they got is from this person who moved from the, uh, that place to the, they have not again mentioned from which place, only to Kerala they have mentioned, okay? So that is what we get it from the history. So it is just a track they have got it. So other places, many people might have gone, okay? Did you got it? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay, so then we went with the release of the one of the defoliator, which belongs to the family, you can see Arctidae, which is a hairy caterpillar, members of the hairy caterpillar belonging to the order Lepidoptera. So we went with the release of the Parachetus pseudo insulata. So it is a Parachetus pseudo insulata. It was in the year 1984 to, for nearly four years, we went for the introduction. So it is a defoliator, which mainly feeds on the leaves of the chromolina. So first we brought it from the Trinidad population. So the population, what we brought it from the Trinidad in the year 1984, so it failed. So it may be because of the climatic conditions is not suitable. And that is what you can see here, the population from this, it has not established. So that is how we got the failure. Later, we got a, a same Parachetus pseudo insulata from the Sri Lanka. So climatic conditions are almost same. So that is what you can see here. 1984, we went with the importation of the Sri Lankan strain. Around 500 larvae, they were brought to the, that is the Kerala Agriculture University, that is the Trishur. Okay, so the larvae, they were not brought to Bangal, but only it was kept in the, because in that area, it was the initial spreading was there. So without of controlling there in the first in the Kerala. So 500 larvae were brought to the Kerala Agriculture University, that was a Trishur. So when they started multiplying in the laboratory. So the popular, because lepidopterans, we can easily mass multiply in the lab, if you have the host in the cages and all. So here you can see here around 40,000 larvae plus 400 adults, they were released in the rubber. Okay, you know that in Kerala, they also have an important as a rubber crop. So it was released in the rubber ecosystem. So where you can see here, they got the partial control of the, this chromolina odorata. So by the year 1985, so by the one year, you can see two hectare of the land was cleared. Okay, later on the same population, it was brought to IHR because IHR people are also dealing with the many of the horticulture crops. So in the year October 1984 to 87. So here also IHR people took work on the release of the parachetus pseudo insulata into the different ecosystem. So they mass multiplied and you can see here 61,345 larvae were released by the IHR, okay? You can see in the different parts. It was in Bangalore also, Chikmangalore, Dakshina Kannada, Kodabu, Mysore, in almost different area. So they have released where it has established. But one is there, it is a negative of why it is not giving the control is we have the heavy parasitization in the larval stage. That is a braconid, okay? Which is our native species of the braconid. They have not mentioned which species of the braconid. They have just mentioned the severe mortality in the larval stage. So that is how the separation of the parachetus pseudo insulata was there in India. But still it is there, okay? The population is there because of the heavy parasitization, it is not able to stand up or give its original population. So this is the one we can use it for the chromolena. And another we have is the, that is the gall fly. So I think so in our GKVK 
very, very you how you have this. If you're not absorbed during the rainy season, please try to absorb this. And if you collect, definitely you the gall fly. So this is widely established in the on the Chromolina odorata. So the name of this is a CS, that is a Cecidoches connexa, which is a gall fly coming under the order Cecidomyidae, the family Cecidomyidae order Diptera. Early name was a Procidoches connexa. Genera now it has been changed. So it is a gall fly. So what happens? The female after mating. So what it will do? So near the succulent portions, okay, where they have the stem, that is the place they select for the egg laying. So here you can say this is the stem part of the chromolina. So where the female, uh, she has laid the egg. So because of the release of the certain chemical, so there will be re reaction and there will be formation of a gall, just like a cancer cell where it will multiply in large number. Here, so you can say because of the release of a certain chemical, so there will be a gall formation. So why this gall? So it is just nothing but an extra growth of the plant, which is mainly caused by the gall fly. So because of the chemical it is. So here, when you just cut open the gall, you can see here, after the eggs will hatch within four to five days, and these are the grubs, you can see the found feeding on the Molina odorata, and they also go for the pupation inside. So whenever you are selecting any of these gall in the nature, so try to find, do not select the gall which is already having a hole. If there is a hole, already the adult has come out. So such such select the such galls where you can see some light style, brown color will be there. That is the point of the emergence. So if there is no entry exit hole, if there is a light brown color at one point, that gall we can collect and keep it. You can get the adult. So this is also doing the best job for the control of the. Chromolina, and this work is again it is carried by the NBR people. Okay, so this is uh, in origin. It is Indonesia, and it was imported to Bangalore in the year 2005. Mainly, it was released in the Kerala and the Chhattisgarh, but it has spread on its own to different parts of the country. In GKVK ecosystem, also we have plenty of this Cecidoches connexa. Okay, so this is one of the two biocontrol agents on the Chromolina odorata. Okay, one is the gall fly and another we have is a uh, hairy caterpillar that is a parakeetus okay so these two you can collectively go for the control but this gall fly is giving the better control by for the because by production of the galls what happens it is uh, reduces the height of the plant and the show, everything the plant health will be affected by the gall fly another i'll just complete this one okay and then i'll just wind the class here the last terrestrial weed under the view have is a crofton weed. So that is a Ageratina adenophora. So earlier name, it is a Eupatorium adenophora. So we don't have this, especially in the Malnard belt, you'll be having this. It is a native to Mexico and spread especially in the hilly areas of the north to south. Very where we have the hilly area, we have this, that is a Ageratina adenophora. So especially in the tea, teak, rubber, and the forest plantation on the sides, you'll be having the plenty of this geratina. That is a croft one weed. So you can see here from Himalaya to Shimla to Bhutan. So everywhere we uh, covering out there, this weed has occupied the land. So this one, so again, it is more dangerous during the rainy season. So what is the biological control? Again, we have the gall fly here. It is a Procedures utilis, but here it is coming under the family Agromycidae. Earlier it was a Cecidomyidae, again coming under the order Diptera. So it is native to Mexico, introduced to India from New Zealand in the year 1963, and mainly we released at two places. One is the Nilgiris in the Tamil Nadu and Darjeeling in Kalimpong, so that is in the West Bengal. So Darjeeling and Kalimpong, which comes in the West Bengal. So these are the three areas where this gall fly was released. So here also it is the same. The female, when she lays the egg, again, there is a gall formation. Life cycle will be com com completed within the gall and when they make a hole and they come out as an adult. So this is the same what I previously ex explained for the gall fly. Established and it has spread naturally. Mainly again, you can see here, the its activity is hampered mainly by the indigenous parasitoid, okay? 
So this is these are the some of the five terrestrial we just I wanted to cover today. Again, two aquatic are there. I will just cover it in the next class. So it can tolerate hairy caterpillar itself is a highly toxic. It also secretes the chemicals. Whenever you touch a hairy caterpillar, it is a, because bees, you know, they are very sensitive. Sensitive and also be a, the hairy caterpillar is not feeding on the nectar. It is feeding on the leaves. Where the poisonous is there, it is in the nectar, not in the leaf. And also you, the whatever the, the uh, resistance, it depends on the type of the insect. Okay, so that is by its own okay you cannot say why it is toxic it cannot tolerate so they are very sensitive that is how we covid for covid summer we are very much resistant we are very much tolerant like that so bees cannot tolerate they are very sensitive okay because that is the honey after storing it will be given to all the young ones which are there in the family and also the, the it is also fed to the adult so if that poisonous uh, nectar is given, then ultimately there will be mortality of the entire colony, okay? Any doubts here? I will just uh, stop the class here. You have any doubts with respect to the, the biological control of the bees? Any other doubts in the end, Ray? Because it is a very important topic. Many times you'll be having listening the important qualities of the weed killer and list the, the biological control mainly by dividing as a terrestrial and the aquatic. Another doubt, Sidena? Don't have any doubts? No, ma'am. Okay, then I'll just close the class. Thank you, ma'am. Can I close the class? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Can you get the screenshot? Yes, ma'am. Don't need it. Okay, but thank you, students. Take care. Thank you, ma'am.